There are many variations of sweet dough, and I'm about to make one for you today. So sable dough, here we go. Tati sable is basically a short dough that is uh, used to make tarts, cookies. It is basically compromised of flour, butter, sometimes eggs, and flavorings, whether it may be lemon zest, vanilla, orange zest, or any types of uh, flavor oils. Uh, it really depends on what you want to make in your application. You can be very creative with uh, any sweet dough or short dough. Pate Sable has a different mixing method than regular sweet dough. Just like biscuit, have you, anybody ever made biscuits before? I made some good, but my grandma used to make the best buttermilk biscuits. I think I'm gonna mix them right now. Now, just, just playing, just playing. Um, you're basically gonna sand the butter and the flour together until you get this nice crumbly texture. You don't wanna over mix it because um, the temperature and the butter has to stay cold. Once you do that, you're gonna add almond powder, um, and some sifted confectioner sugars, or 10X. This is the sweet portion of it. Almond powder is a lighter filler for flour, um, and it also gives off a, a great uh, nutty flavor. If you're allergic to almonds or any type of nuts, then you can omit the almond flour and just substitute it with regular flour. Or in this case, we're using cake flour. So after you add your almond flour and your confectioner sugar. You're basically going to gradually add your egg yolks um, and your vanilla paste. Uh, this will start to bind every all the ingredients together inside of your bowl. And it's gonna make things very smooth. Don't mix this mix all the way. Just mix until it just comes together because remember, this is a short dough mixing method, means meaning mixing for a short period of time. So, just as it starts to come together, you're gonna take that dough and you can either place it on the surface or like I'm doing right here, leave it inside of a bowl and you're gonna facade. Just keep scraping away and just combine the remaining, whatever's left on the bottom of the bowl, combine it inside of the mix until everything is homogenous. Once you do that, you're gonna wrap it in a plastic wrap really nice, and then we're gonna place this inside the refrigerator. Now, you can put this in the fridge for a few hours, but you should really consider doing this overnight. It's gonna give the flour a chance to hydrate, and it's gonna give the flavorings a chance to mature inside the dough. If you try to roll out a, a sweet dough or any short dough too fast, uh, what's gonna happen is it's gonna end up breaking apart on you as you begin to roll it out. So I actually have some dough that I've done earlier this week and this is what I'm gonna use to demonstrate how to uh, roll out the dough and place it in a tar shell. So, just basically roll the dough out. If you can see my rolling pin, it has some guys on it that help me roll out the uh, exact thickness I want. But you don't want your dough to be rolled out no thicker than a penny. So right here, I'm using these guys to help me out so I can get an even thickness all the way across my dough. If you guys want to know where I got these uh, guys from, then I will leave a link in the description below and you know, pick some up. If the tart dough begins to become too warm when you roll it out, just take it and put it in the freezer for seven to 10 minutes, let it firm back up, and then bring it right back out. If it's too warm, it's gonna break on you. You know, it's, You're gonna have a difficult time trying to get it in the tart shell. So um, now it's time for me to uh, place the tart dough inside the tart shell. I'm gonna begin by placing the dough over the ring mold. If you want to know where I got this ring roll from, I'll leave a link in the description also. Next, I'm going to, to start um, working on my sides of the tart. I want to make sure I get the tart dough in the bottom of the shell. I don't want to have any slack on the sides or in the corners because the tart dough will, will not bake evenly. Now that I got the tart dough inside of the shell, I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to trim up the edges. And that, I'm going to dock the dough. You can use a, a docking rolling pin or you can 
uh, use a fork. Right here, I'm using a fork. Docking the dough is gonna make sure that my tar shell stays in place and it doesn't bubble up at the bottom when I bake it inside the oven. After I dock the dough, I place my tart shell back in the fridge for a few minutes just to make sure that it stays cold. After resting in the refrigerator for a few minutes, I put it inside my oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. So when we put the tart shell inside the oven, we're not trying to cook the tart shell all the way. We have something else to do, okay. But wait, there's more. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna bake this tart shell just until it starts to brown. Once you see it starts to brown a little bit, you take it out, let it cool for a little bit, and then we're gonna brush it with an egg wash. That's right, I said an egg wash. The egg wash is gonna help seal uh, the holes at the bottom if I'm putting a wet filling in there. It's also going to add shine. It's gonna make it look really good. You will enjoy the results. Once I egg wash the tart shell, it goes back in the oven again at 325 degrees for it to set. Once the egg wash sets and the tart shell has a nice golden brown color, we are finished. Now, like I said, these tart shells can be kept in the freezer or refrigerator for a certain amount of time. Baking the shell in advance, you can keep this in the freezer for very long time because it's already baked. Also helps uh, when you have unexpected guests come over. You can take your tar shell out of the freezer and you can let it thaw out and you can fill it with anything like pastry cream, almond cream filling like I made in my previous video. The most common tart that people would make is a, is a fruit tart. Who wants me to do a video of that? Leave in the comment section below if you want me to do a fruit tart to give you something simple and basically you make for your guests. But when fruits, especially strawberries and raspberries are in season, those are the best fruit tarts. Here's a quick and easy recipe. I hope you all use it. I hope you all enjoy it. This is the Patient Warden. Once again, signing out.